Hello there! So the exciting time has come for my favourite video of the year and that is the wrap up of my favourite books of 2017. Now those of you who have been watching me this year will know that I haven't really had the best reading year um, and I was quite worried that I would struggle to find books to put on this list and it's certainly the books that are here are not possibly as standout as the books of last year or the year before. Um, I had two really really good reading years. This one has not been as good. I think there's a few different reasons for that. Um, I have been in a situation where things have been changing and I haven't had much time to read. And also, I think in the past two years before this one, um, I've had books that have been really sort of groundbreaking. And obviously now that I've had those books, I know that that's the kind of thing that I'm looking for. Um, so things are less sort of astounding me. But there are still some really good books to mention. And as always, I have picked out 10 to talk to you about. So let's get straight into it. I'm going to start off with The Power by Naomi Alderman. I did listen to this on audio, so I don't have a physical copy. And when I was thinking about what to include, I was kind of umming and ahhing about this one because I feel like when I experience a book on audio, I can't fairly judge it because it is such a different medium. And on the one hand, I find that I generally enjoy books less on audio, but I also sometimes find that I enjoy them more because I spend more time with them, I get to know the narrator, um, the different character voices and things like that and I think that was definitely the case for this one. The narrator was fantastic. I've said before it's quite hard to find her actual name because she's part of a cast of different people um, but she narrates the body of the book. There are just a few snippets of other people in there. Um, I did manage to find her name a while ago so if I manage to find it again I'll link it down below but yeah she was a fantastic narrator so I think that very much influenced my feelings about this book and I do want to read it now um, and I don't know if I would probably enjoy it less maybe if I read it but for the most part I just I loved the concept of this book so this is a dystopian book set in the future it's kind of got book inception in there as well but I won't go into that um, but it's, it's basically a book that's been written about the future it's about a time when women start developing this power um, and sort of electricity and they can give men shocks and things um, and they start sort of coming to power and overpowering men um, and it sort of looks at what happens with that and how some women choose to abuse that power, the church chooses to abuse it as well um, and it's just really really an interesting concept and I really thoroughly enjoyed the storyline. But the good thing is it's not kind of blindly saying that if women took power everything would be better, you know, it looks at the flaws um, and it looks at the fact that anyone who has that amount of power can be very dangerous, um, which I think was really effective as well. I just really enjoyed the listening experience of this and the main reason that I picked it for my favourites really is because it's one that I keep remembering and that I keep, when I look back on the books that I have experienced in the past year, it's one that really stands out for me. So I thought it deserved a place. First ever audiobook to get into my favourite spot, so there you go. Then I have got quite a few non-fictions this year actually, which is a new thing. So I've got Girls Will Be Girls by Ema O'Toole. This is a fantastic book that looks at gender and Ema O'Toole starts to play around with her own gender um, and she part of that is that she decides to stop shaving and it looks at how people reacted to her but also she looks at studies and the facts and the figures and sort of makes you question how you yourself treat gender. I think sometimes a lot of books about gender kind of look at it in an abstracted way um, and it's kind of other people's issue, you know, it's other people's thing. Whereas this book really brings it into question of your own gender and how you yourself conform to gender stereotypes when you maybe don't realise it. Um, and it was just absolutely fantastic. Emo Tool has a really funny writing style as well. I just think anyone should read this, male or female, it was absolutely stunning. Then I have got Quiet by Susan Cain. Now I thought about not putting this in here um, because it wasn't even a five star read, it was a four star read for me. But the stuff in here has really stayed with me and it's something that I keep returning to again. Um, just in general life. So I think it deserves a mention in here. This is about the place of introverts in an extroverted world and the way introverts are treated and how that's probably wrong and we should actually respect them is just different to extroverts and how actually some of the people who've really made a difference in the world have been introverts themselves because introverts are generally sort of more creative thinkers, they're more inward thinkers um, so a lot of the amazing people in the world have been introverts. I think it's just a really interesting book to sort of help not only help extroverts understand introverts but also to help introverts understand themselves. So it says in here about introverts need less stimulation than extroverts um, and it speaks about the way that 
you know, if an introvert has socialised, it's not that they don't want to socialise, it just means that after they've socialised, they'll be more drained than an extrovert and they'll need time to reboost. Um, and using that sort of standpoint and that thinking, I've really been able to improve my own interactions and my own socialisations. So that is why this is on my list. Then I've got The Lonely City by Olivia Lang, which, though I'm not playing favourites with this list, I think has to be the top non-fiction that I read this year. This kind of put me a lot in mind of Just Kids by Patti Smith, and if you've been here for a while, you will know that I absolutely adore Just Kids by Patti Smith. Um, this is kind of similar in some ways, but also really quite different. So this is Olivia Lang talking about what it is to be lonely um, and she does that in a few different ways. She talks about her own experience moving to a big city, not knowing anyone and how she dealt with that loneliness. Um, it also talks a lot about artists and how they sort of put loneliness into their work and sort of use their art to reach out into the world and there's studies in there and psychology about being lonely and I just I just think it was really really fantastic I think it's one of those books that it's perfect to read if you just lock yourself away and devour it which is exactly what I did I locked myself away for a weekend where I barely saw anybody and just read it and at the end I'm not gonna lie I was going a bit stir crazy with loneliness funnily enough um, but I think it really really impacted the reading experience and bought the points home I just I loved it I absolutely loved it I'm hunting everything of Olivia Lang's from now on then I have John McGregor's Even the Dogs this is not the first time John McGregor has appeared in my favorites and I'm sure it's not the last but I was really glad to read this towards the end of the year because I read um, so many ways to begin by him at the start of the year and was not that blown away by it quite disappointing um, but this was a step back to the John McGregor that I love so this is about it's kind of difficult to explain but a man has died but it's not really about that. It kind of fractures out into the people who he knew and how they find out and how they react to his death and also just their lives in general. Um, it looks a lot at homelessness and drug addiction and alcoholism and oh, it's just so, so good. It's it's typical John McGregor, quite experimental. Um, it, a lot of it is written in sort of second person, but you're kind of like a uh, fly on the wall. Um, it's a really interesting style that I haven't actually seen done anywhere else. Um, other than in The Crimson Petal and The White a little bit, but this very much takes it much more to a sort of fly-on-the-wall situation. Um, and it was just so touching and emotional. It's, it's obviously quite a grim and bleak read, but who doesn't like one of those? Then I have got The Beginning of the World in the Middle of the Night by Jane Campbell. I kind of felt like I had to put this in here because what I loved about this book was not only the reading experience, but I loved the whole thing about it. I loved the package that it came with. I loved meeting Jen at one of her events. And obviously the stories are fantastic. This is, as most people probably know by now, kind of fantastical stories. Um, some of them are magical realism-y, some of them aren't. I think there's definitely something for everyone in here. But Jen completely writes to my style. So there's a story in here called Animals about a woman who orders an animal heart online which is fantastic. The title story The Beginning of the World in the Middle of the Night is sort of done completely in dialogue um, and it's about couples sort of rewriting their history and it's just really touching and there are many others in here that I could talk about. It's a fantastic collection but I feel like this book really kind of shaped the end of my year and I had a really lovely time reading it and as I say going to the event was really wonderful as well so yeah this one had to have a place in my tops. Then I've got The Hours by Michael Cunningham. This was just a blow away book for me absolutely astonishing just wonderful um so this is about three women um it bases itself around mrs dalloway by virginia wolf it's kind of a rewrite i suppose but but it kind of runs with the text and makes it something else so we follow virginia wolf is one of the people in here and she is writing um mrs dalloway at the time we also follow i think she was called mrs brown i don't know it's been a while since i read this um she is a housewife who's sort of struggling with mental health issues um, and she is trying desperately to read Mrs Dalloway but her sort of motherly duties and wifely duties keep getting in the way and then we follow Clarissa Vaughan who is nicknamed Mrs Dalloway by one of her friends and she's probably the most parallel with Mrs Dalloway itself because she is arranging a party for her friend. Um, it's just fantastic. The writing in this is phenomenal. Um, Michael Cunningham has to be one of the best writers of women that I've ever read and that is including from women authors. I just think he got into the psyche of women so effectively. This is so, so good. If you like good language and complex characters, 
give it a go. Then I've got Hotel World by Ali Smith. This was a recent read for me. You may have noticed it from my latest wrap up. Um, this kind of is a lot like um, even the dogs, but in an Ali Smith-esque style. So this looks at a incident in a hotel where one of the waitresses dies um, and we sort of ricochet out onto five different people and look at different ways in which the incident has impacted them or different ways in which the incident has meant that they are where they are. Um, it's just, it was a step back for Ali Smith for me. I've had a few of her books recently that haven't been as standout as The Accidental. In fact, I haven't read anything by her that has been as standout as The Accidental. But this was definitely back to that experimental kind of easy to read but very literary style as well. And I just, I just adored it. Again, if you love complex characters and interesting writing, that's a winner. Then I'm back to the start of the year with The Birth Machine by Elizabeth Baines. I read this for my Paddling in Independent Publishers series and I really thoroughly enjoyed this. I'm not going to lie, it was very, very early on that I read this, so my, my memory is a bit blurry, but I can remember really adoring it and needing it to be in my top books. So this is about, it looks at feminist issues and about birth. And if I remember rightly, it's in a world where they're developing a machine which pretty much removes the woman from any part in her own birth. So the woman just becomes a vessel uh, and everybody else has every say in everything that happens to her. Um, and it, it's very much just removing the woman from the process, removing her rights regarding her own body and her own baby. Um, and it was really quite chilling and interesting and I just loved it, loved it, loved it. And then finally we have The Poisonwood Bible by Barbara Kingsolver. Again, this is a more recent read for me. This was a phenomenal book and I said at the time of my reviewing it that though it's not my favourite book of all time, I think it is probably the best written book I have read and I would still stand by that. Barbara Kingsolver's writing is astonishing. You know, it's not often that you come across somebody who astonishes you with their language use, but she definitely managed it quite a lot. This looks at a missionary family who moved to the Congo when it is a Belgium occupied. While they're there the Congo declare independence um, and everyone sort of urges them to go back to America because obviously things are about to get pretty fraught but they insist on staying. Um, we mainly follow the daughters of the family so obviously it's their father who forces them to stay. He becomes quite obsessed with the idea of spreading the message of God to this Congo village. Um, but it also looks at the daughters and half of it looks at their life together as a family. Then a major incident happens, which we've sort of been leading up to for the whole of it. And then it sort of fragments and we look at what happens to the daughters later on. Um, some of them stay in the Congo and look at sort of the political situation that was happening there um, and the way America was treating the people and the politics and things. Um, and some of them go back to America and we look at sort of the difference in their lives in America. Um, I just thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this. I definitely enjoyed the first half more, but the second half was very interesting and I think it teaches you a lot of stuff about things that you don't necessarily know about. Lucky for me, my boyfriend knows pretty much everything there is to know about history. So while I was reading it, I could I could sort of check with him that these things had happened. Um, but every incident in here, he did verify was a true incident and we sort of researched a few things online that we weren't sure about. Um, and it's all stuff that actually happened, but obviously in a fictionalised setting. So I think there's a lot to learn from this book and it was really, really fascinating, as well as being just astounding. So those are my top 10 books for the year. I'm really glad that I actually managed to find a top 10. I was, as I say, pretty worried that I wouldn't, but I think I'm quite happy with the books that I have chosen here. They may not be as standout to me as some of the books I've had in previous years, but they certainly have a charm of their own. So that is everything. Please let me know down below what your favourite reads of the year have been, and I will see you next year. Bye.